Hello everyone, my guest today is Craig Radford. He's a second time logistics entrepreneur going from zero to more than 10 million in revenue in three years with no money. He's got 14 employees and a big believer in speed, growth hacking and bootstrapping over raising capital. He was able to win uh, the Canadian post office over UPS and FedEx with no money. Craig, you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready, let's do it. All right, so ship Wismo, and just to make sure I did get that right, you put in your bio zero to more than 10 million. I assume that's 10 million in revenue, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, good, and when was launch year? Uh, it was uh, late 2015, but our first dollar was made in actually late 2016. Okay, um, so 2015 launch, first dollar in 2016. I was like asking this, what'd you spend? Do you remember what you spent on MVP before your first dollar of revenue? Oh yeah, it, it was brutal. I, we, I had about, uh, my partner, I had about $200,000 out in credit cards and uh, internet loans trying to put together an MVP product with software. Um, and so... It all worked out in the end, but that's what we spent around 200,000. Okay. So between 2015, 2016, 200 grand into the product, you get your first dollar revenue in 2016 and then scale up today. You're doing what? 10 million run rate today. Uh, correct. The run rate would be about, uh, like forward earnings or forward revenue would be about a million a month at the moment. So it's, uh, it'd be around 12 million right now. That's great. And where were you exactly a year ago? Just so we can calculate growth. Uh, we were only half a million a month a year ago. So oh, good. it's, uh, it's uh, more than doubled, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Let's get more into that in a second. But first, uh, we kind of jumped the ship here. What's the company do and, and how do you, is it Pure Play SaaS? Uh, no, it's actually, it's not a Pure Play SaaS. Um, it's a little bit of a hybrid. So um, we do have a digital product uh, that allows people to basically uh, connect their Shopify stores and other e-commerce stores um, and create shipping labels uh, in Canada um, and, and produce postage and shipping labels they, they might not uh, have access to otherwise. We're a one-stop shop for um, e-commerce retailers. So, but we're actually picking their um, belongings up in person. So there's a physical aspect to it. Uh, sometimes they'll send it in using a courier and we're basically rerouting it so that it's a lower cost um, final delivery. Okay, past- so, so I mean, are you a last mile delivery kind of transportation logistics company or are you more like how do you get your cost per postage stamp down lower to pass the savings on to your postal customers? Like what business model are you in? Uh, technically, it's called First Mile Logistics, and it's, it's something that has it's not been really around that long. It's a little bit more established in uh, the U.S., but essentially, uh, when I used to work at UPS, uh, it would be very expensive. You'd be dealing with a lot of different carriers and a lot of different invoices and a lot of different account managers, and I said, you know, that makes no sense. Let's have one guy pick up all your needs, domestic, international, USA. Uh, you're going to get one bill, one person to deal with customer service, and we're going to give you the kind of rates that basically Amazon gets, even though you're not Amazon. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how many, well, just to be clear. So if you're, it's someone's this, your, your customer, someone who's selling on Shopify, someone purchases something that they're selling. Let's say it's a pair of leggings that they produce in Kentucky. You're going to have someone in Kentucky go pick up those leggings and take them to your centralized tr- kind of system. And then you put the postage on and actually ship it. Uh, that, that's the right idea, but we we actually just service Canada. So it would be, let's say you're in Vancouver or you're in Toronto. Um, we're obtaining your belongings, like physically collecting them, bringing them to our location and through, um, bulk purchasing power, we're, we're routing them through our accounts and through different means. And we actually work with post offices all over the world. So not just, um, you know, Canada post, for instance, here, very bureaucratic and clunky and expensive. So we sidestep them and we go directly to the U.S. Postal Service. We cut deals with them. We go to the Royal Mail and um, the United Kingdom, um, go to Australia Post. And we're just routing this stuff all over the world. And uh, we're doing it through our accounts and and, and getting your costs way down. And we're taking a small pass through. Um, I was going to say, yeah. So your customer is the the Shopify seller that sold the leggings, not, uh, you know, the Royal Mail service. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how many, I guess, how do you measure customers? Is it whoever sent at least one thing through you over the past 30 days or how do you measure that number? Yeah, you know, our database would have over 100 customers in it, but only about 35 of those are uh, daily shippers. Um, And, you know, and from those 35, there's a bit of an 80-20 principle in terms of where the revenue is coming from. So we definitely have some enterprise shippers who are um, are hauling more than their, you know, fair share of our revenue. Um, And then we have a segment of smaller shippers and you know, they, we have daily recurring revenue, which is interesting because you got to ship every day. Um, so on the smaller side, you know, it could be a thousand dollars a day spent on, on postage and on the larger side, it could be, 
ten thousand dollars or more in a day um, spent on shipping. So just to be clear, a hundred customers have connected in over your lifetime since twenty fifteen, shipped at least one thing through you. Thirty five ship daily, and about four of those thirty five customers make up more than eighty percent of your revenue. Uh, I wouldn't say it's that concentrated at the top. Uh, it's probably more like. Uh, 30, 70 or something like that. But yeah, we, we probably have a group of five to seven people who are making up, you know, a heavier part of the revenue. And so we are moving towards a little bit more of a wholesaler model uh, and dealing with, with the big guys and, and servicing them really well. And, and give me a sense of quantity. So daily about how many kind of units or however you measure it, how many things are you shipping or processing per day? Uh, we, we'd have about 10,000 items uh, plus going into the U.S. on a daily basis. Uh Two or three thousand are going through Canada, um, and and we have two or three thousand international packages. So they're like sixteen thousand total, or ten thousand altogether. Uh, no, more like sixteen thousand in total. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so thirty-five customers today. Uh, you just mentioned that you, uh, I believe, you said you're at you're doing about a million dollars a month right now. I'm sorry. Come again. That's okay. You said you're doing about a million dollars a month right now in t- in revenue, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's from 35 paying customers. So that means each one's about $28,000 a month. Uh, yeah, but it's tough to use averages because it's really a dichotomy. There's, there's small customers and large yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, we've addressed that already, though, so people can understand that. But j- just for the sake of the story, right? So so on that customer that's going to put twenty or 30000 kind of spend through you per month, is that all revenue that actually hits your bottom line? Or do you actually only keep like 10% of that because then you have to go pay the postal service and print, print stuff and you have cost of goods sold? That, that's right. So we, we don't end up keeping that, you know, that much of it. It's just a bit of a service fee for pickup, customer service, billing and, and access to our network. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it you know, it, it gets thin near the end. No doubt. Big so, revenue, a little bit of a smaller and and uh, end game. Yeah. Yeah. So when you strip out kind of your hard cost to goods sold, not your soft variable like marketing, but your hard cost to goods sold. Are you taking like you'd say maybe 10 percent on the million each month or five percent or what is it? Uh, well, it's a, it's going to depend on the, the size of the customer, but uh, I'll go to almost nothing on a really large customer um, just to obtain purchasing power. Uh, to be honest with you, it's part of like a growth hacking strategy, I would say. But on on a good retail customer, it should be around 25%. Yeah. Okay, got it. So I mean, is it fair to say in terms of money that you capture each month that is actually going to your bank account that you can then use to hire and build the business, you're taking out $250,000 a month on a million dollars through your system? Uh, it's going to be less than that on the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Like, like a hundred grand or lower. So, yeah. It's somewhere in there in that, okay. in that range. Okay. Tell me more about the team. Um, how many team members do you have today? 14 people. Okay. 14. And are they all distributed or all centralized? Uh, they're, they're pretty centralized. We have a small team, uh, in Vancouver and then we have, uh, the brunt of it here in Toronto. So, um, we've got about four or five people in operations, um, a couple doing software, um, a few in customer service. Um, myself, the other partner here, uh, we're the sales, uh, the main salespeople actually. Um, so we do a lot of the enterprise selling ourselves still. And then we've got, uh, you know, one other sales guy. And you're, bo- you're bootstrapped, correct? Fully bootstrapped. Yeah. So are you operating kind of a cash flow positive today? Or are you still burning? No, we're, we're cash flow positive. Um, that's the nice thing about shipping is people need it and you can make a little bit of a, a little bit of a margin, uh, you know, Right off the top, right away, day one, we were making some revenue. I guess shy of all that money we spent on uh, on software. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you say profitable, I mean, are you talking like 10 5% or what's actually going to the bottom, bottom line net each month? Yeah, it, it's probably going to be in the 10% range yeah, Okay. Uh, or, or, or less. I mean, we're, we're dumping money back in the company. We're not looking to hoard cash right now. We're looking to grow. So, I'm investing in people. I'm investing in software, you know, very heavily. I, I don't need to uh, do anything for my investors. I don't have any. So, it's all about growth still. So. What do you pay fully weighted to get a new, you know, customer that's going to pay you again, 30 grand a month or a million a year? Yeah, it's expensive because you got to put a salesperson uh, out on the road and it's going to be probably about $20,000 to acquire a, a good size, large customer because if, you really just aren't going to land that many. If you're paying a sales guy a hundred grand a year, you'd be lucky if he, if he makes five accounts in a year. So we, we have a long sales cycle around 12 months or more um, on some of these enterprise accounts, very high cost of of acquisition. Yeah, but it sounds like you spend 20 grand, you get them in and they're going to put call it 20, 30 grand through you monthly of which you keep call it 3000. So your payback period is still like eight or nine months, right? That's manageable. Yeah. 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 How many of the 14 people are quota carrying sales folks? Uh, three, but you would include myself and the other partner in that. So we're probably going to ramp it up to maybe four salespeople, but uh, right now still humble beginnings. So how, how do you measure churn? 
Um, yeah, people who either go out of business and are no longer paying us or people who have left for some other reason. Uh, our churn is very high with smaller clients and it's basically zero with the large ones. When you look at like revenue churn over the past 12 months across your entire base, you know, revenue churn is nice because it doesn't matter if they're big or small. You're looking at just the revenue, not the size of the customer. Um, what was revenue churn over the past 12 months? Uh, well, I can tell you like from a percentage would be maybe 3% or something like that. Okay. And then the, the customers you signed up exactly a year ago over the past 12 months, have you expanded them account, got them to pay more than an additional 3% to make up that hole? Uh, correct. And they're just organically expanding. I mean, if you have a, an e-commerce company that's doing well, they tend to do really well. Uh, you, you'll get some people who are growing five, six hundred percent year over year. And um, I don't have to go win a new client. I, you know, they're, they're bringing it in for us and we've done nothing else to win that revenue. So um, there's a lot of uh, like upside growth from organic. Yep. You uh, you stay in bootstrap, keep in equity or you have any plans to raise capital to drive growth? You know, we get asked a lot from customers, we get asked from vendors. I, I, we're going to keep it bootstrapped unless someone comes along as a strategic partner who can really buy into our future. But I, just a person with money, I'm not interested in giving any equity away. If they're going to open some really interesting doors, yeah, we would look at it in the next two years. Yeah. If someone came to you and offered, you know, you're doing 1.2, 1.3 million right now in terms of run rate and somebody offered caught four or five million bucks to all cash to buy the company, would you sell? No, too cheap. Big future at Wismo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a question of how you quantify the future, right? Bird, bird in hand versus birds in the bush. Yeah. So what do you think your big future is that you haven't capitalized on already? Well, we have a domestic product that we rolled out this year that I think is actually going to be um, huge for us. Right now, a lot of the export products we do are somewhat niche. These are people selling accessories online, sending them all over the world. Uh, it's all cross-border stuff. Um, what's more interesting is servicing the Canadian market um, and, and, and approaching foreigners. So. We have people in the U.S., high volume retailers now shipping into Canada. Uh, we're using a mixture of Canada Post, but we're also using our own courier networks, uh, very similar to Amazon Prime uh, or Amazon Flex model, where it's just a random you know, person in a van. We've, we've established networks uh, through brokers as well as some of our own for, for delivering people's goods. Um, and that's growing the fastest growing part of our business. How, are the, how many contractors do you have that do that first mile pickup? You have, must have a massive network. Uh, we try and keep it as small as possible because it's, it's expensive to maintain too many small guys. But yeah, we tend to have uh, like teams of people that are managed. Um, maybe we only have at the moment uh, three um, vendors doing that for us. And uh, underneath them, they may have 10 people or, or so. Okay, um, so you don't have full coverage in Canada. In other words, you couldn't, if someone no, puts, no. okay, you, you basically open up these teams where after you sign up the customer. I'm happy to have, you know, Canada Post service the uh, the remote areas where it costs $100 to deliver to a Canadian igloo. And uh, I'll, I'll just deal with the you know, Montreal, uh, Vancouver and Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Toronto alone is like 70% of, uh, of the market. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, the hard, th hard thing about hard things. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 good answer. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a company? Uh, intercom. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Six and a half. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Uh, married with a nine month old baby. Oh, wow. Okay. Got your hands full. How old are you? Uh, 30. All right. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Stop torturing yourself. It's all going to be okay. Guys, there you have it. Ship Wismo again, helping people ship faster, especially in Canada. They handle first mile kind of pickup on these delivery, uh, these these shippers shipping so much, uh, so many goods. Over thirty five customers use them. About call it seven percent of their customers, or seven customers make up more than eighty percent of their revenue. They put over a million dollars to their platform each month. They only keep though obviously about ten percent of that after all their costs. So call it one point two million in terms of run rate today. Scaling nicely, they are bootstrapped. Fourteen people on their team. You know, profitable to the tune of call it ten twenty grand a month, depending on how aggressive they're being on growth, spending 20 grand to get a new customer. So seven, eight month uh, payback period. Craig, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you.